Hi everyone, today I want to talk about 5 different ways you can mix materials in Blender. If you know nothing about Blender materials, I have created a YouTube playlist with some of my recent tutorials about this topic. And if you're completely new to this software, there is another YouTube playlist somewhere down below that will guide you through everything from the installation and interface to the point we are at the moment. Attention, sponsored content. Sponsored content. This Chocofour video is sponsored by the Chocofour store. Wow, what a surprise. Who decided to bless us with the discount codes? In the video description you will find a 50% discount code and the first 10 users to use it will get, well, a 50% discount to any purchase at the Chocofour store, including the lifetime bundle with all of our assets. Let's now get started with the video, shall we? As always, we are gonna start with a clean Blender file and add a plane to our scene. Now I'm gonna switch to the shading viewport here and this is the setup we are gonna use in our video. I'm quickly creating a new material and as you already know, we have the principled BSDF shader added by default. What we can do with it is creating all sorts of a basic kind of materials with reflectivity with textures plugged in here. But today I wanna to show you an alternative way of making materials. So within the node editor here, when I press Shift A and go to the shader settings here, you can see next to the principled BSDF, we have many other different nodes available. And the way to mix them together is using this mix shader. So if I plug it into the shader input, nothing really happens because we need two other inputs here. Let me press Shift A again and let's choose the Diffuse BSDF node. So Diffuse BSDF is what you would normally call just a color node. It doesn't have any reflectivity, any other features and it allows you creating this very uh, quick rendering scenes and setups. So if you want to do the previews or so-called clay renderings with just a one white color, for example, applied to everything. This is a very good uh, note to go with. And right now you can see I've plugged them both into the inputs here. And I'm able to use this slider to define which of those two nodes is visible. So if I go down to the left, the first node is visible. If I go to the right, the second one is visible. And if I go somewhere in between, we get a color mix on our object. What's really cool about the mix shader node is that we can use it many times, as many times as we want basically. So I'm gonna press Shift D within the node editor and I'm gonna drag this node so it joins this link. And right now we have this shader setup mixed with the input here. So let me create a shader no, uh, a new, yeah, a new node again. And this time we're gonna choose glossy BSDF. So what this shader does, it's actually responsible for the reflections and the reflections only. As you can see right now when I'm rotating my plane, we can see some of the reflections visible. And if I go down with the roughness, they actually become much more sharp. And using this slider here, I'm able to define how much of those nodes are visible. So if I go totally to the right, we only get the reflectivity. And if I go to the left, we only get this diffuse shader. So yeah, this is the first of the methods how you can mix the shaders together. You can obviously in, uh, create two principled BSDF shaders, apply different values to them and use this mix shader to join them together and display on the 3D model. The second method of mixing the materials together is using a texture. So if we zoom in to the mix shader node, you can see the slider has a value assigned to it. The zero gives us 100% of the first shader here, one gives us 100% of the shader here. And in 3D graphics or in graphics in general, zero is uh, equivalent to the black color and one is equivalent to the white color. So what happens if we use this kind of checker texture 
as an input here. Let me do that. So I'm just dragging and dropping the texture and plugging it here. Now you can see our mesh, our plane got divided and we have the shader visible where the white color is and the yellow color visible where the black color is in the texture. We can also visualize it here in the UV editor. So this is our texture loaded to the node setup. If I select the UV island and scale it up, you can see this is also happening here. Um, the cool effect we can have is when we use a glossy shader, for example, instead of the color shader input. So what this gives us right now is this interesting effect. If we reduce the roughness, we are getting this interesting material differentiation where yeah, the black color of this texture is very reflective and the white color is, sorry, I think it's the opposite. The black is uh, purple and the white is super reflective. But what happens if we have gray values here? So let me use another texture, which looks a little bit different. If I plug it in here, I can preview it here as well. So we have this gray square in the middle and now you can see this gray uh, square, which is 50% black, 50% white, gives us an exact mix of those two materials. So we have 50% of this purple shader and 50% of the reflections applied here. This is a pretty useful thing to know, especially when you're using uh, textures for improving the look of the materials such as wood, concrete and other real life uh, yeah, shaders, materials whatever you want to call them. So this is the second method I wanted to show you. The third method will be a little bit more advanced and it will be assigning the materials according to the face orientation or mixing them according to the face orientation. To explain that we have to go to the overlays here and enable face orientation settings. Um, you might remember this from one of the previous videos. When we create an object in Blender, uh, the software has to know what's the outside and what's the inside face um, for the geometry. So the blue color in general defines the outside faces and if we delete it you can see everything inside is red. Um, this is pretty useful if you want to have one type of material on the inside of an object and the other on the outside. So to do that we go here to the note editor, press shift A and go to the input settings here this time. You, as you can see, we also have many different um, nodes to choose from, but now we will just focus on the geometry one. It has, again, many different inputs available, but we will just use the back facing one. So once I plug it into the input here, turn off the face orientation, you can see our objects now have two shaders from this setup here applied to them. So on the inside we will have this material, on the outside we will have the purple one. Again, we can mix it with actually any shader node we want to. So let's use the glossy again. Let's just plug it in here. And this way we can make one side of the mesh super reflective and the other side totally matte and covered with color. Fourth method is mixing these two materials uh, depending on the camera angle in the viewport. Let me show you how it works. We are going to create the layer weight node and plug the facing input here. So what do we have right now? You can see the object kind of gets this yellowy glow around its edges and it's simply this shader being visible. If I point my camera uh, exactly from the top view to those geometry elements, you can see we are getting 100% of this shader. If I move my camera downwards and I decrease my viewing angle from 90 degrees to almost zero, we are getting 100% of this shader being visible. This is a very cool way of faking the principled BSDF shader. So for example, if I plug in the glossy BSDF node here, 
and reduce the roughness to let's say 0.1 where we are kind of getting uh, yeah the physical material where the diffuse color is more visible when looking at 90 degrees and the reflections kind of appear around the zero degree viewing angle the problem with this is uh, you might think it's possible to control this effect using this blend slider here so if we decrease it we kind of get a little bit less reflections but what I don't like about using this uh, settings here is when we look at the object directly from the front we have absolutely zero reflections and this is something that doesn't happen in real life so let me show you how to fix that uh, we are fixing that let's just use the default value here we are fixing that by adding the RGB curves or you can use the color ramp as well but I personally use the RGB curves and with the curves we are able to move this starting point of the curve upwards what it does it actually makes this reflective shader being visible at the value we set up here directly from the 90 degree angle so if if it's like this you can see we have absolutely zero percent of this shader visible if I kind of move this point upwards we are getting more and more reflections up to the point where it's exactly like that uh, to set the set up this material correctly I'm usually just using this kind of curve as you can see what's great about the RGB curves is that we can add multiple points to it so we can also go very crazy with the shaders but in general this is something I've been using for the past few years before we got the principled BSDF shader to blender um, this setup allows you faking the principled BSDF shader making it actually more optimized because this setup renders a little bit quicker than the actual principled BSDF shader but we can also use it uh, for some abstract results as well let me show you that so right now we are just getting a little bit of this yellowy color visible but if we disturb the curve like this this is the effect we are actually getting it's maybe not realistic I mean it's definitely not realistic but you can use it for let's say uh, creating maybe a tune shader creating some interesting fabrics etc so this is the fourth way of mixing the materials using the layer weight node together with anything in between them the fifth method of mixing two materials together involves vertex paint and it's the most advanced of the all uh, methods I've just showed you and before we start editing the shader we have to go to the edit mode and subdivide the cube a couple of times now we go back to the vertex paint I'm gonna select this face here press the T key so we can see the icons on the left now with the A key I can select all of the faces and when I click this icon here I have the brush settings available uh, be sure to have the blend mode set to the mix here and we are gonna change the color to the black so you can see I'm now painting around the model and the black color you might guess already will be the value of zero here in the mix shader the white color which is uh, the default color of the object will be the value of one here so I'm just gonna paint something very random here like that and I'm just gonna use one of the tools here as well to make this painting effect a little bit more interesting and blurry maybe yeah I guess I guess that's enough um, let's go to the object mode and once we switch back to it you can see the whole thing disappears now how we can make it visible again to make the effect visible we gonna need the attribute node here if I put it somewhere around this area and plug it in here again you can see nothing really happens and that's because we have to use the attribute name the name you can find around the vertex colors here so you can see there is a call name here we can just copy and paste it 
to the attribute window and voila this is what's happening so we can actually paint the mask on our 3d model in blender and this mask will then distribute uh, the shaders we have set up here it doesn't look maybe that interesting when we just mix two materials together but let's see how it goes with the glossy shader so let's use the glossy BSDF plug it in here and reduce the roughness to 0.1 now now I think this is much more convincing and interesting. What's also very cool about this method, you can always go to, back to the vertex paint and like literally do the adjustments in real time. So now I'm switching the color back to white, painting it around here. And as soon as I leave the vertex paint mode, I can see the effect applied to my geometry. So yeah, as I said, this is the most advanced, probably the hardest of the methods, but I think the effects you can have and see them in real time are the most rewarding ones. And that will be it for this video. I really hope it was informative and I really hope you learned something new today. Perhaps it will also encourage you to play around a little bit more with the Blender material system and experiment yourself. You may also consider subscribing to the channel if you like the content that I'm creating and donate to Blender Foundation because thanks to amazing people like you and me and the others, this amazing community-based piece of software can become even better. Um, that would be it for now. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.